Hello everybody, my name is Star Raptor. Welcome to another episode of This Week in Star Wars Canon. If you're new to the show, basically every week I go over everything new in the Star Wars universe that ties back to the movies. This includes everything such as the TV series, the novels, the comics, and to the video games. And guys, we are just a month away from Rogue One, a Star Wars story. And with that, we had the release of the companion prequel novel, Star Wars Catalyst, written by James Lucino. If you guys stay in tune with the canon, you know that James Lucino also wrote Tarkin. Um, and just adding this in here as well, I also got this at uh, Barnes & Noble. They give you a nice little poster, uh, double-sided here. You got the uh, schematic of the Death Star, pretty cool. But getting into this, um, picked this up yesterday. I'm very, very well into this thing. Um, I'm going to give you guys my little initial impressions. I will be posting a review up at the end of the week, um, a spoiler-free review. And then later on, I'm going to do a, like a spoiler discussion for all you guys that don't want to really read the book. I'll have something there for you guys, all the big major uh, plot points and everything. So uh, getting into what I think about this now. First off, this is a pretty groundbreaking uh, canon novel in itself because this is our first Star Wars story that is actually going to be like a prequel to one of the movies. Um, so this is the first time we're actually getting introduced to these characters, such as Galen Ursha, or Urso, the scientist, uh, the father of Jyn Urso, who we see in the trailers, as well as the um, director Orson Krennic, where you get to see his backstory. So this is really cool seeing these guys um, learning about their backstories before we actually get to see them in the movie. So it's really, really cool, really awesome about that. Um, James Lucina, you can expect... Uh, this guy is like the George R. R. Martin of the Star Wars canon novels. This guy is so uh, in depth with his characters. Uh, he goes so much into the psyche of you know what's going on with each one of these characters. Um, really fleshes out the universe. A great thing about James Lucino novels, uh, he always tends to do like a galaxy-spanning adventure. So in this novel so far, I've seen so many planets which i'm a big fan of i don't really like to read novels that are placed on one planet in particular i like to kind of move around and we get a lot of that in this story also we get to know a lot of things about characters that we didn't know before obviously but like really groundbreaking stuff um again i'm not gonna do too many spoilers but you know just galen urso's character himself uh this kind of mad scientist guy in a way but at the same time he's very loyal to his family and he doesn't take crap from anybody. This guy, he stands up for himself, for what he believes in, even in the face of danger. He is going to do his best to make his voice heard. And on the other end, you have Krennic, who, you know, he is like, he's, at this point, this is during the Clone Wars, I meant to tell you guys. So this story takes place in about, like, kind of the beginning of the Clone Wars, and it kind of progresses through time, uh, years and years into the future. So we have Orson Krennic, who, at the time we meet him, he's in the Republic, um, and it just goes to show that he's really rising in ranks. Like, you know, most of the time we see these Imperials, they're already in their ranks. Like, and they're just these, these you know, British accent guys. And, and, and um, uh, the actor, uh, Ben Mendelsohn, actually went on an interview and he did say that you're going to see he has a different accent than all the other guys in, in the movie. So basically from that, you can kind of see that he's rising in the ranks. He is basically uh, starting from the ground. And he's doing things that Imperials wouldn't really see as the right way to go. He is not really, uh, you know, reporting to his uh, superiors uh, about certain things he's doing. He's taking it into his own hands to do what needs to be done to rise in his rank. He wants to get near, you know, the, the uh, Supreme Chancellor slash, uh, you know, Palpatine in general. The Emperor, Supreme Chancellor, whatever. He wants to get near there. And... This story is about the Death Star, obviously, so we have a lot of in, inner workings of what is going on, what is taking so long with this uh, construction of the Death Star. But guys, that was just my little brief, uh, like, what I've read so far without giving too much away. Again, I'm going to be doing a full-on review, non-spoilers, later on in the week, and you can also expect a spoiler-free discussion at some point in the next week or two. So definitely stay tuned for that. Uh, continuing on with the Rogue One fun that we have coming out, we also had this really cool Facebook uh, kind of VR experience called uh, Rogue One Recon Mission. And uh, you guys can all try it out now on your smartphones. I'm not sure if it works on a computer yet, 
But uh, basically, Verizon has this thing where it's like a two-minute, like, little interactive. They did this with The Force Awakens last year with the little Star Destroyer Jakku thing. Um, basically, it's you're, you're following these. Uh, it's a little story involved. Pretty pretty cool, actually, with the uh, X-Wings. They're going through hyperspace. They get a transmission from, like, a probe droid or something. They check it out. And they come across the construction of the Death Star above what looks like Scarif. And, of course, they're blown to bits within minutes. So... Um, but it's kind of cool because they mentioned like, oh, Mon Mothma, we got to get back to her to give her this information. But this was made by ILM X Labs, so it's pretty cool because um, I like seeing these. Like you feel like you're in the cockpit of the X Wing because you really are, and you're looking around. You can see the astromech droid behind you and everything else. So very, very cool. And moving on to my last story, I want to talk about this week. Um, we didn't get any new comics, but we did get an awesome new comic miniseries Marvel announcement. Uh, we are getting a Darth Maul prequel comic. It's going to be written by Colin Bunn, and its art is done by Luke Ross, who you guys might remember. He actually did the, um, which just finished up the Force Awakens adaptation. So, it's going to be really exciting because they actually released a synopsis with this. This, yes, this is before Phantom Menace, guys. So, we are going to learn about what the training was like, what what the relationship was like between Palpatine and Darth Maul before the events of the Phantom Menace. And in particular, we're going to get the training of of Maul, um, how he like kind of keeps his anger in check. Um, they do mention that there's a Jedi that he will be hunting. Uh, Maul, he is going to be going to the underworld. He is going to be, as the, as the writer wants to do, he wants to do a combination between Maul from the Phantom Menace, that persona, like that really dreadful kind of, quiet calculated persona as well as the clone wars uh maul that we all know and love where he is just a brilliant guy that really just wants to conquer everything so we get to see that really cool interplay and one thing i'm i'm really interested to see if we're gonna know about is maybe some hints of Plagueis. Maybe what, what's going on with Plagueis, because we know he could have been around that era. That's before Phantom Menace. Um, and, and getting, I'm really liking this announcement, because, I mean, as you all know, I have a review for uh, Darth Maul, Son of Dathomir, which is in between uh, Revenge of the Sith and Clone Wars. So we got that cool little four-issue story, which kind of showed what happened to him after he was captured by Palpatine. And now we get more focus on Maul before... All these events so that makes me wonder like they're really and between rebels now they're really escalating the position of maul at this point so that makes me wonder do they have something more planned with him in a movie in the future may he be in an obi-wan movie if that has ever announced i think it'd be a pretty easy assumption that he would be um to finish that whole story um and going back to the comics, now this is pretty cool because now we're going to have a Dr. Aphra story, which is not going to be tied to any of our central characters. That's going to be in the original trilogy, all right? We're going to have the regular Star Wars, also in the original trilogy, following our characters. Pretty cool. It's been really great so far. Um, and we're also going to have, uh, let's see, the Poe Dameron series, which is actually before the events of The Force Awakens. And we have the sequel trilogy covered. But now we got this issue, which is going to tie all the way back before into the Old Republic, the furthest back we've ever seen in the Star Wars canon timeline. So I am really excited about this announcement. I was waiting for it because we have Han Solo miniseries ending any week now. I, I was expecting the comic to come in today. It didn't. So that's pretty much all I have for this week, guys. But let me know in the comment section below. Are you guys reading Rogue One Catalyst or Star Wars Catalyst? I'm sorry. Uh, let me know in the comment section below. Um, are you guys excited about the Darth Maul comic series? And have you guys tried out the uh, Star Wars Rogue One Recon Mission um, VR? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, thank you for watching. I'm Star Raptor. May the Force be with you, always. So, did you like the video? Then make sure you rate it a thumbs up. And if you did that, go over there, hit that Star Raptor head so you subscribe to my channel. Doing so will keep you up to speed on all of my latest content. Speaking of which, you can see a couple of my recent uploads down below. I'm also on social media, so what are you waiting for? Let's start nerding out.